my name is Simon Bennett and I'm the OSAP founder and one of the project leads. And this is a series of talks I'm giving uh, to the folks here at Stackhawk about SAP. Uh, and today is all about the brand new uh, ZAP release, which is ZAP 2.11.0. Uh, so without further ado, I will share my screen and tell you all about it. So hopefully you can see zaproxy.org now. And what you'll see is if you go to the download page, we now have ZAP 2.11.0. So this has been released. And if you actually go to the blog, um, right now um, it is the latest blog. We may have other ones by the time you see this, of course. But we have a blog which tells you all about ZAP 2.11. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this, just um, showing you some of the features and telling you a little bit more about them. I won't have time to go through everything in detail because there's too much, uh, but I plan to do more sessions in the fairly near future going through some of these things in a bit more detail. So uh, the first thing is alert tags. So I'll now switch over to Zap. And this is Zap 2.11. Uh, it looks very similar to Zap 2.10. So there won't be uh, uh, much different that you'll see here. Uh, you'll see we've got a news item which will allow you to see the um, release notes. But other than that, it's pretty similar to before. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kick off an automated scan of budget just to give me something to work with. I won't let it finish because uh, it will take too long, but I'll just kick it off and let it run. Just let one of the um, active scan rules finish just, to, just so we have something to work with. Uh, and what I'll do now is I'm going to show you, so I'll just flick back to the release notes. And the first thing on the list is alert tags. So if we go back to Zap, and then select one of these alerts. Um, if I scroll down, you will see these alert tags. And most of the rules will have them, not all of them. They're not relevant to everything, so I think. Um, but most of them will have them. And what you'll see is that these are they, what the alert tags we have are for the OWASP top 10 uh, 2017 and 2021. So the, alert, the rules will actually add these by default. And what you can do is if you um, want to edit an alert, you'll find that down at the bottom, we've got the default alert tags and you can add your own. Um, so, so what you can do is you can actually put, you can add your own keys and values. Um, key, they don't, you don't have to have a value, so it can just be keys. Um, for the OWASP top 10 keys, we've got links to the relevant pages. Um, which explains what those are, um, but you don't have to have that. So you can put whatever um, tags in you like, and you can do that via the UI, as I've been doing here, or you can do it the, by the API. So if you're using Zap and automation, uh, or if you're building a service around Zap, then you can add your own keys, um, which can reflect whatever you want. So um, this could be something, um, you know, I mean, it, it could be could be links to issues in um, in um, issue trackers or anything you like. But that is, um, so that is the keys. Pretty much all I have to say about the keys. Uh, so the next one is the automation framework. So the automation framework is an add-on and it was available for ZAP 2.10, uh, but it's now included by default in ZAP 2.11. And the automation framework is, it's still work in progress, so it's not finished, um, but it is the direction we're going towards and how we think most people will end up automating SAP in the future. There is actually a UI around it, although it's, uh, you know, we expect people to actually run uh, the automation framework from the command line. And I will do a deep dive on this at some future date, uh, but I'll just give you a quick overview of what you can do. So I'm actually going to add budget to a new context. And what we can do is, so the automation framework, everything is defined in one YAML file. And you can create this YAML file by hand, or you can actually create it from the Zap GUI. And the plan is we want to make it easy for you to actually do all of your testing in the Zap um, desktop GUI. 
and then export that as an automation plan that you can run from the command line. So I'm going to create a new plan using Bodget. And we've got various profiles. I'm going to choose a baseline one to make it quick. And I will just deselect the add on check in the uh, Ajax Spider to make things a bit quicker. And what you'll see is we now have the plan displayed underneath. And one thing I'll point out is we have these tests. Um, so one thing the automation framework can do is it can actually run tests to, to kind of sanity check what's going on. And I will kick that off and you'll see it is run the spider and if I go back to the framework you'll see that the test is actually passed um, so the test was by default at least 100 URLs found um, and it did find that. We also noticed that the report job failed um, we've just found a problem with the reporting we're going to fix that very soon so one thing uh, you should do as soon as you update get a new version of Zap, do check for updates and update any add-ons uh, because there will be fixes in them. Uh, but the, so the automation framework allows you to um, control Zap in a very fine-grained way and it's well integrated with the UI so you can test it in the desktop UI and then export it. So we have a lot more details um, on the website um, and explains all the different types of jobs and all the things they could do. The next thing I'm going to talk about is report generation. So we have a new way of generating reports. So the old core reports have been removed. They are no longer available. Um, so what you've got is we've got a button up here for generating reports. And there is a um, generate report option on the, um, uh, on the uh, menu as well. And so this I like, gives you a lot more flexibility than we had before. So you can set the scope. We have a kind of a template for the for the name. So I'm going to select budget, and we've got various. Um, we've got filters so you can define which risks and which confidence you want to include. But we've also got lots of different templates, um, which is much better than we had before. So this is the default one. So I will generate the report, and that's the bug we hit, which is annoying. So that will be fixed by the time you see this. So instead, I'm going to have a look at the high level sample report. So here's the report it's generated. As you'll see, it actually has um, some pie charts and things like that. The reports look a lot better. And we actually have so this modern report and we, we have various themes. So we can actually choose what it looks like. And this one has sections as well. So you can see, you can choose exactly what appears in the report and you'll see a different sort of report. And one thing you will see is that we actually have the ability to include the header and body. So you can see the request and response header and body for all of the different um, alerts, which is um, much better than we had before. So there are um, I mean, the reporting is using a templating engine called Timeleaf, uh, which is much easier to work with. And so these reports, um, so we have some of the traditional reports, uh, but these are quite a few of these have been created as part of the uh, reporting competition that we had. Um, and it's much easier to create reports. So if you want to create your own reports, then have a look at the blog post. So we have a blog post all about um, the reporting, the report competition. The reporting competition is actually over, um, but it does give details. It explains how you can go about creating new reports. Um, so have a look at that. So if you want to actually create new reports, it is very easy. So, um, and actually one of the things that the, one of the things I was going to mention is, let's have a look at, the traditional report and hopefully you can see it's got things like the tags so the tags are there including the new value I put in and the OWASP ones um, automatically um, link to the relevant places so you can actually go and see much more information about uh, the relevant OWASP categories that these 
um, alerts are associated with. So that's report generation. Uh, the next thing is OAST support. Um, so OAST, we have a blog post about that as well. So this is one of the um, two Google Summer of Code projects that we had this year. So out of band application security testing, there is a blog post that will tell you all about this. And the idea here is that this allows Zap to actually test for vulnerabilities that are not necessarily um, not kind of like the standard vulnerabilities where you make a request and you get a response and you tell whether your application is potentially vulnerable just based on that response. This is out of band security testing. So the responses or the evidence could often go to a different server and potentially um, hours, days, or even weeks after the original testing. So in order to um, handle this, we work with open source um, services like Boast, Tuk Tuk, and Interact SH. Um, so this is still an alpha release. There's, um, but there's a lot more work going on on this. So you can play around with it right now, um, but I don't think any of the existing scan rules use this, but they will very shortly. Another thing we've got is retesting um, alerts. And again, we've got a blog post all about this. Um, and again, this is another Google Summer of Code project. And the idea here is that it allows you to retest specific uh, vulnerabilities very quickly. If you're actually running Zap against a real service, it could take you know an hour or two to run the um, a full scan. And so to actually verify whether you want you have solved particular problems, you at the moment you have to go and actually re do a full retest, which would take you know one or two hours again. The retest add-on uses the automation framework and allows you to retest specific alerts very quickly. Uh, again, this is alpha, uh, but have a play around with it. And again, this is going to be updated very soon. Um, and hopefully both of them will get to beta quality and be um, very useful for you. Next thing I'm going to mention is Docker. So we have a set. Uh, so we have a set of Docker images, and um, we have a set of package scans included with those. Now re we've just released uh, the new stable um, version of the Docker image, and the plan is we, you know, until recently we've only um, released those when we've done a full release. We're actually going to re-release the stable and bare images once a month. We will not be updating the core, but we will be updating add-ons and any changes to the package scans. Um, so we will be tagging these images by date, so you will be able to stay on, stay on a specific version if you want to. And I will mention the package scans are being migrated to use the automation framework, and that's going to carry on going through the life of um, Zap to 11. And the last thing is statistics. So one thing you may not be aware of is that Zap maintains a set of internal statistics. And we don't actually have a, anything in the desktop UI for them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to point directly at Zap. So the statistics are actually only available via the code or via the API. So if have a look at the statistics, um, we have a set of site-specific ones, which I can show you. Oh, sorry, these are the um, these are the general ones. So you'll see there are quite a lot there, and that will tell us a lot of interesting things. And we have site stats as well. And in this case, we've only got one site, so you can see things like response times and codes and content types. Um, but if I go back to the all of the the generic stats, you'll see we've got things like for um, we can see the number of times made certain API calls, uh, the number of URLs added by the spider, um, passive scan not per rule, the time they've taken in milliseconds, the number of alerts. Um, so these ones are actually the same thing. Um, the time taken, and we will be, we will be depreciating those, so those will not be available in a future release because we're reusing the IDs now, which uh, won't change if you um, change your language. And you've got some more spider and some script scans down here. Now, if we go back to the release notes, 
you'll see it points to the ZAP internal statistics page, which you can also find via the documentation internal statistics. So this is the full set of stats that ZAP maintains right now. Uh, there's quite a lot there. They are searchable, and these things actually link to the relevant bit of code if you want to see that. And we've got a description here, and it'll tell you whether they are um, global, whether a counter or a high watermark. I think we support low watermarks as well, but they we don't have any at the moment. Now these can be statistics can be maintained either by the core, which won't change for ZAP to eleven, or they can be maintained by add-ons. Um, so this we expect this list to actually increase. And one of the reasons we've put a lot more statistics in is for the automation framework because we made it much easier to do tests based on a variety of conditions, one of which is statistics. So if ZAP maintains a statistic, then you can test it as part of the automation framework. Um, so this allows you to do a much better sanity checking. So things like the number of um, URLs the spider has found or authentication. So we've got a whole set of stats all around authentication. Um, so you can tell whether there's been failure, success, um, the state, whether it's logged in, logged out, unknown, um, assumed in. So if you're polling, um, for um, an authentic, a particular URL, then what within the while you're actually polling, we're kind of assuming in until the next poll. Um, so these stats actually give you a very a very good indication of what's going on inside ZAP, and means you can include these sanity checks within the automation framework or using via the API um, to actually see to test that ZAP is doing what you really think it's doing, uh, which we think is uh, very important. So that is um, a very quick summary of 2.11. Um, there are full release notes, and that's got all of the, um, there's a whole load. You see, we're actually showing you here the statistics that have been, core statistics that have been added at this release. Um, the new add-ons, um, all the Docker updates, changes to bundle libraries, and the enhancements and bug fixes and these all link to the original um, issues as well. And a couple of new endpoints and some depreciated endpoints to do with reporting. And that is my quick overview of SAP 2.11. Thank you very much. If you're watching this on YouTube afterwards, then please ask any questions uh, in the um, section below. And please like the series. Thank you very much.